So in the previous part, I ended up getting the Chow Key by accident. So I figure I might as well show you at least one of the three gardens right now. Because I'm going to be mostly focusing on one garden for the extra, the extra video showing off the Chow. And that one's going to be quite a doozy, let me tell you. Right off the bat, you'll notice something very different. See that tree there? The one that looks different from the other trees? I planted that. You can actually plant trees in this game. And the way that you do that is that you get Chow to win certain races so that they have the tools necessary to plant trees. And they don't necessarily need to have the watering can. It just speeds up the process. And some tree fruit is awful, some fruit is good. Citizens of Earth, lend me your ears and listen to me very carefully. My name is Dr. Eggman, the world's greatest scientist, and soon to be the world's greatest ruler. Now witness the beginning of the greatest empire of all time. <laughs> Holy shit! That scene freaked me out when I was a kid. Cause imagine if that happened in real life. If half of the moon was blown up. I hate how that scene has no subtitles, by the way. Look! Half of the moon is gone? But yeah, that scene kind of freaked me out as a kid because it was a sort of moon empathy, you know? Tails, why are you asking that question? Of course it's the Chaos Emerald. What else would it be? You're supposed to be a genius. And most of the time, his genius has actually made really good use of this plot. How did you figure that out? <laughs> Amy is basically the comedy character of the hero story. Both stories have comedy relief characters, but while well, Amy is kind of useless, kind of a joke, even she does accomplish something. Rouge is a lot more useful than Amy is, even though she's a comedy relief character. You know, that's how comedy relief characters should work. They shouldn't be useless, just there for a joke. But anyways, this is Mission Street, and this is one of my least favorite mech levels in the game. Don't do this, whatever you do. I was so proud of myself for being able to get over here without the hover. I thought, wow, I'm such a skilled badass for being able to get onto that higher route before it fell down. But eventually, it turned out that doing that gets you in an unwinnable situation because you can't beat this level without the hover upgrade. They shouldn't have made it possible to skip the hover upgrade then. And thankfully, you don't hit a checkpoint. Well, hmm, I think you do actually. Never mind. So I had to pause the game and restart the level in order to beat it. Because, see that black cage? It's blocking your way. And no matter what you do, you can't prevent that from falling. And you can't jump far enough without the hover to beat to get over there. What great fucking design! So, you've got to let yourself fall down there. What a great way to reward skill. Why is it called the booster when it's the hover upgrade and not the boost or anything? That's stupid. 
But yeah, that was a huge waste of my time. You'll notice that the themes of the game are suited more to the character than to the level themselves. Like, Tails' levels tend to have a techno guitar theme to them. While Sonic's levels have fast-paced rock music that's good for a Sonic game. I like Tails' music, it's kinda underrated, but not something I'd really go back to. And Eggman... Eggman's levels also have techno rock themes. But they're a little more hard rock, and so I like them more. <laughs> I always love crushing Omachow under that thing. It's hilarious, although it's really easy to get hurt when you're doing so. But anyways, Knuckles has rap, and Rouge, Rouge's levels have their own theme suits here as well. And I hate how... Well, actually... This, this is really annoying. I would have had to backtrack for a really long time to get back to where I was. It really... Look, they... I, it took a minute for me to get back to where I was there. There's not enough checkpoints in this stage. Mission 3 in general is a really annoying level to go through. It's so easy to get hit. Enemies constantly drop out of the sky and you walk into them because you don't know that they're going to show up. There's lots of... There's lots of airplanes that drop explosions and then you walk into them and get hurt because you're impatient and you want to beat the level quick. Like, I just don't think this level is very fun to play. It's got nice music, but... Why exactly is Tails going through this place and not just flying over it with a tornado? Because this mech he's in is the tornado too. It's just been shapeshifted. Which is a good representation of the engineering talent, but at the same time... Why isn't he just turning into a plane flying over like a whole level? Well, it, it makes sense for a prison lane because... Tails would not be able to beat the level without the mech. Because you've got to shoot past bars to defeat enemies, and Tails wouldn't be able to do that in his normal flying form that we all love. And for Mission Street, if he flew over the level in a plane, I guess people, police helicopters would be able to see him and find him easily. So he kind of has to do this. And at least it illustrates what's going on in the story through gameplay. It's just that most of Tails' levels are all going ahead. And so they kind of feel like they're just tacked on. Tails has a new theme in this game, which is sort of played with an Indian sitar, and I like it a lot more than his theme, Believe in Myself, to be honest. Like, it doesn't have a woman singing it, which doesn't make sense for a male character. I miss his theme. I didn't expect the inside of like, the, the, the cutscenes in this game play the character's themes a lot more. They don't really do that in modern games now. Usually they play usually they play the character themes when the characters are doing something important, like Tails has a genius moment, so his his theme plays. You can still jump into enemies in this game as Knuckles, which is good. It, it's just hard to tell because he doesn't appear in ball form when he jumps anymore. So it can be kind of misleading. Aquatic Mine is a pretty annoying level, to be honest. I like to make it easier to get the Emerald Shards by... I, I walk into... You, you lower the water level to its lowest point. And that way, it's, more, most, it's most likely that you'll be able to get all of the Emerald Shards. So that's what I like to do. But sometimes there are emerald shards that are put in places that are that you can't get to if it's the wrong water level because there's a floating square platform blocking the way to it. You're always going to be drowning just before you get this. And I was a little slow getting it, but I still managed to get it. So there's actually a dragon animal here. I missed it. I think I'll show it off later. Basically, there's three different types of golden legendary animals you can give to your chow, which increase the luck stat. And I have no idea why the luck stat is actually invisible. The same goes for the intelligence stat. It's invisible, and I have no idea why. I also don't know why there's no visible hunger meter. Like, that's really stupid. I like 
the music of this place, although I don't like the rap. The rap kind of doesn't belong. It's all laid back, I guess. You can't really get to those... You can't grab those hangers unless the water level is at 1, which is kind of annoying. Oh, underwater. Thanks. It's not like there's a billion different water pools in this place. But yeah, the air necklace makes you impossible to drown. So, th like, there aren't that many. There's only two water levels in the whole game. I mean, Rouge goes underwater, but she doesn't get the air necklace. You might think that it's very easy to not know where the air necklace is. And so, you can have complete hell with the next level that has water in it for knuckles. Because you don't realize that you need the air necklace to beat it. I mean, you can beat... You can beat the next level with water in it without the air necklace, but it's extremely difficult and you pretty much need every bubble you can find. So, the air necklace is one of the few upgrades in the game that is actually useful and good to get, but it's also a guy dang it, so it's easy to not know where to get it. And again, I'm not cutting any of this footage out, because in order to show off the game properly, I need to, I need to show you exactly how tedious it is finding all the emerald charts. Remember how satisfying it was in SA1, where you could easily cheat beating the Emerald Shard missions under time limit by just restarting. And so you find where the Emerald Shards are, restart to reset the timer, and then go to where they are. You can't do that anymore, because in SA2, when you restart a treasure hunting level, all of the emerald shards are re-randomized. Their location gets to a completely different place. And on top of that, if you restart a treasure hunting level in SC2, you lose the emerald shards that you'd already collected. So the restart function is not nearly as good as it used to be in SA SA1. Now it's just more of a rage quit thing. And a lot of times I go into rage quit a treasure hunting level and because the emerald shards, I can't find some of them. Some of the emerald shards are put in such annoying places that I can't find where they are. I never actually rage quit any treasure hunting levels in this LP, but it's something that I've done. And yeah, treasure hunting levels are, they aren't necessarily the longest levels in the game. I guess that'd be the mech levels, but they feel the longest. At least with the mech levels, you're always making progress. You know, with, with these, you're just going through the same area that you've gone through already, exploring it, and just looking for one emerald chart at a time. This is basically the Werehog of Sonic Adventure 2. It's padding, that's all it is. And you know, at least with the Werehog, you're always progressing through the level. I mean, a lot of the time, they'll cheaply force you to stay in one small area for a long period of time by making you fight enemies or complete puzzles that take a very long time to beat. And I would have preferred it if it was just platforming and that was it. Or if you defeated all the enemies in one hit so it was no big deal. But I guess then leveling up the Werehog would be kind of pointless. My point is, at least with the Werehog, it had interesting platforming where you were constantly progressing. And at least with the Werehog, it had variety in what you were doing. There was lots of different variety. The combat was repetitive and monotonous, and you're doing it a lot. At least, at least not only did you have combat, but you also had all sorts of different things to do. With this, it's the same thing every time. Sometimes you're revisiting areas you already visited because the radar didn't bing the last time. I mean, usually there isn't an emerald shard that spawns really close to another one. So usually you don't feel like you're cheated out of getting one of them because you go to one place and then you go to that same place again later and there's an emerald chart that you miss. It's usually not like that. But SA2 levels, like Sonic Adventure 2 is the game that starts out the trend of the levels going on for too long. Sonic Heroes is often insulted for that and rightfully so 
But SA2 is where it really gets glaring. SA2 is where the levels start to overstay their welcome for me. It's a Sonic 3 Knuckles problem all over again. I don't mind when a level lasts a long time when I like it, like with City Escape and Metal Harbor and the final Eggman level. Like, I don't mind that it overstays its welcome because it's fun throughout. But for the most part, the levels are too damn long and it kind of feels draining. Not as draining as Sonic Heroes, but it's up there. 